This is me, and this is the biggest V8 piston engine powered car that I've ever made in Roblox Plane Crazy. In case you didn't know, it took me 3 full months just to make this car blocks by blocks by blocks. There's also engine, clutch, transmission, there's even a working drum brakes and so much more. The first one we've got an engine specifically for a V8 double-sided hover engine. It's double-sided so that the hover could cancel out each other forces. Basically, a hover engine is an in-game component that produces its own force without affecting the other parts of the engine. Unlike magnet, where if you use it here, it will push both itself and the plate affecting it. But a hover engine is only pushing its own self. An engine itself consists of a crankshaft which is then connected to a piston arm. The piston arm helps convert the linear motion of the piston into a rotational motion of the crankshaft. After a force is applied by the hover, the crankshaft will spin, which thus creates a rotational force to the flywheel. The flywheel itself is used to stabilize the rotation of the crankshaft. The force of the hover itself is being timed at an exact angle so that the piston could push the crankshaft only when the piston is in a ready position. To learn more on how this engine works, I will be leaving some links to my video down in the description into the specific topic. In case you didn't know, this car right here is actually already being posted before by some random user from TikTok that showcases my car while I'm AFK. And considering how long ago this thing is uploaded, you could tell that I've made this car in a very long time ago. And considering that Plane Crazy is getting a lot of new updates. I suppose we should tell people about this car now before the car expires too much. Now we've got the main power source. The power will then go through a clutch, which is the one that attaches or detaches the rotation of the engine. This clutch is very useful in a few conditions. You can stop your car without having to turn off the engine. Not only that, it also allows you to easily switch between gears because the gear is now having an easier time to match RPM between input and output. The clutch itself is a double-sided clutch type. The head of the piston pushes the first plate, while the body of the piston pulls the second plate. After the rotation is transferred from the clutch, there's this reducer which by the way is the most effective reducer that you could've ever find in Plane Crazy. The reducer itself is used to match the required torque to spin the wheels. In this case, it's reducing the rotation speed by 2 times from the input, but also increases the torque by 2 times as well. The increased torque could also potentially allow the car to move faster since it's easier to rotate the wheels now. Now before we get into the next part, I just want to tell you that out of all cars that I've made in this channel, this car might be by far the car with the most complete features of mechanics from the real world. The car itself is so big that it even requires a folding mechanism to fit all of the mechanics in a single vehicle. And now you might be wondering how am I going to connect those shafts from a folded car? There's this rod between two half blocks. The rod is separated from the half blocks. When the car folds, the rod will slide perfectly between the half blocks, which then allows the power to transfer to the output due to the offset of the cylinder. This output then powers this 3 speed transmission with a reverse gear. The gear works by sliding each gear independently using a piston and bearing to control it. To simplify it, we have this one piston which then connected to this bearing which also holds this gear. This configuration allows the gear to rotate while moving in a linear pad like this and then the gear below it is the output of this transmission. When we push the piston, it will rotate the output, pull the piston and now the car is in neutral mode. Now imagine you have 3 more gears like this, then we're gonna put a suspension between gears. This will allow each gear to be pushed and pulled without affecting the others. So far, the rotation output has been experiencing a lot of process. Now it's time for the final mechanical piece, and it is one that's used to separate one rotation into two independent rotational output. Differential When you're driving your car straight, both left and right wheels are rotating at the same speed. However, when you're driving the car, for example, to the left side, there's going to be a difference in wheel speed, which requires the left wheel to rotate on a slower speed than the right wheel. To solve this, a differential is placed in the rear side of the car. The differential's input is coming from the transmission's output, which then it rotates the left and the right wheels independently. The way on how it works is surprisingly simple. First, the small pinion gear will rotate the ring gear. The ring gear will then rotate this gear called the spider gear sideways rotationally in a different axis, while also having the gear on its own axis spins freely. The spider gear then rotates the two other gears which is the left and the right gear. Now watch what happens when our car is steering to the one side. 
As you can see, one wheel is rotating faster than the other wheels. The next one we have a suspension. The suspension itself is a double wishbone suspension type, one of my favorite suspension types. The suspension configurations allows it so that the wheel could have the same angle as the car. Even though the movement of the suspension is rotational, the rotational movement itself keeps the car from bouncing. This is due to the fact that when you're using a normal suspension, the wheel only goes up and down, but by double wishbone, you're actually putting some extra movement, which is a slight left and right movement. This helps preventing the car from severe bounce. After that, now we have the steering system. This mechanism allows the front wheel to be rotated while also having a suspension combined. How this works is actually pretty simple. First, you've got this pin and gear, which moves the rod to the left or the right side only. The steering force will then get transferred to the main wheel's bearings using a tie rod. This tie rod helps the wheel so that every time the car steers to the left or the right side, the front wheel's angle will always match a meeting point to the rear wheel. This is used to keep the wheels in track with the roads. And for the last part, we have the brakes. Same like the clutch mechanisms, the front brakes of the car is also using one piston with the head pushing the first plate and the body that pulls the second plate. As for the drum brake, this is where things get interesting. The drum brake works by using this lever right here. This lever is being rotated by a motor 2, which then the motor 2 is connected to these long yellow rods. The yellow rod is then connected to an axis changer. This axis changer allows it so that when the yellow rod is going horizontally, the output could be vertical. This is exactly what happened to this drum brake. When I pull the handbrake, the yellow rod will pull the axis changer, which then pushes these wedges to the drum brake casing, creating a friction to the wheel, which then could potentially stop the wheel. There's also an extra piston brake right here, which could be used for temporary brakes only, and not a parking brake. And that's all of the basics on how my mechanical V8 car works in Plane Crazy. Please note that I will or already made a specific explanation video to each part in this video, including engines, transmissions, and many more. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We offer quality and memes video on mechanical engineering throughout this channel. Stay safe and have a good day.